Can you see it? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Let's see if it goes up and down. Yes, it does. Uh, great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, which one it is. so it should be fine. It should be fine. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Well, you never know if it works. This thing sometimes it gets stuck and uh, yeah. 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 I understand. You know, sometimes the function does change it a little bit. So we, we yeah, don't yeah. understand where it, the function <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, like my husband had a conference the other day and mm -hmm. everything got stuck suddenly. So he had to switch off the whole computer and then back on. And it was like a conference, like international conference with many people. It was very embarrassing. But it's not <laughs> his fault. Nobody knows what happened. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Alessandra? Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, nice to see you again. Yeah, and you? How are you? <laughs> um, uh, I'm still alive. <laughs> You're still alive. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, that's right. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, how's the pandas? <laughs> ah, yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, that's right. Uh, yeah, it's um. <laughs> I'll say, uh, I took a bit of a break uh, over the last month. Uh, Oh, did you? Well, I mean, summer holidays, I think you, yeah. anybody can take it. I didn't, but you know, it's like, maybe I did the wrong choice. Uh, uh, no, no, actually, I felt that I could have done a bit more. <laughs> yeah, thing. but I mean, you, you're just, <laughs> yeah. like, you have plenty of time, you're just starting, so you're okay. <laughs> oh, you can right, afford then. this at this stage of your PhD, so. <laughs> uh, so. <laughs> so it's good. Okay, thank you for everyone and the time is coming. So just like, if you, shall we start? Mm -hmm. Okay, so good morning and welcome to the last day of a new Bay Conference. And thank you for taking time out and being here today. I'm Hiromi, a member of the organizing team of this conference and I'm glad to host this morning session. In this session, morning session, we are going to have very exciting keynote sessions and the poster exhibition from Broadfield. And for the first session, Professor Alessandra is making a presentation on financial economics. And the second presentation of a corpus linguistic by Professor Malbeck and Dr. Vegan will be made after that. In the following poster session, Stephanie and Olivia will give us a presentation on narrative typology and the segmental or super segmental training of foreign language. And before I start the first session, I would like to have some announcements briefly. All of these sessions are recorded. So if you're not comfortable to be recorded your name on the screen, please make sure the, to change this very name. And also it can be nice if you use chat and raise hand function on the bottom of the screen when you have any questions or comments on the presentation. Okay, now I think it's time for the first presentation by Professor Alessandra. She is from economics department and specializes in the financial economics, such as links between macroeconomic activity and finance, and the firm behavior under imperfect capital markets. In economics and broadly, social science also uses computers to deal with huge amounts of data, such as the stock prices, which change every single second. So this presentation is a very good opportunity for us to have an excellent example in social science and tips how to deal with data in finance and economics context. So I will hand it over to Professor Alessandra. Please get started. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much again for the invitation. I mean, it's a great pleasure for me to be able to present um, this conference. So thank you very much. And uh, could I just inquire, like I have about one hour, is that, is that right? I'm sorry. Yes, exactly. Including 15 minutes of Q&A, but if, if you would like to speak much more longer, it, it would be perfect. Okay. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. I think it's uh, maybe shorter, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much again. And um, yeah, so the title of the presentation is Inventory Investment and the Choice of Financing. Does city level financial development play a role? 
And this is joint work with several co-authors. And the last one, Jun Hong Yang, is uh, one of my uh, previous PhD students who is now working at SOAS at the University of London. Okay, so the plan of the presentation will be as follows. Uh, I will start by giving some motivation and background. And then I will say what, our, what are our contributions in this paper. And then I will present some hypotheses that we're testing and then discuss our empirical specifications, talk about our data and present some summary statistics, and then talk about the main empirical results and then some robustness tests. And then I will talk about how we account for the financial constraints. And then finally, uh, I will have some conclusions and some policy implications. So that's the plan. So starting with some motivation and some background, okay. Um, so there is many studies which have used macro data uh, in various countries worldwide. And what they found is that there is a positive relationship between some broad measures of financial development and economic growth. So many, many papers in this field, they find that those countries with better developed financial systems show a higher economic growth. However, China appears to be a counter example somehow. Why? Well, it has achieved a high economic growth, okay? However, its financial system is not functioning very well. So the Chinese case is a puzzle. How is it possible that they manage to grow uh, at such fast growth rates despite having a financial system which doesn't work very well? That's a mystery, basically. Okay. So let's talk briefly about the financial system in China. Well, the financial system is mainly bank-based. And so what happens in China, there are many state-owned enterprises, okay? And what happens, the banks, they're mainly state-owned. And what they prefer to do is lend the money to the state-owned enterprises, instead of lending the money to the private enterprises, and in particular to the SMEs, which are the small and medium-sized enterprises. So there's a contradiction here, because the private sector, and especially the SMEs in China, they're kind of uh, the best performers. They're the companies that invest most and grow at the fastest rate. However, the banks, they prefer to lend the money to the state-owned enterprises or SOEs, and not to lend the money to the private sector. Okay. But the state-owned enterprises, they are generally not very productive, not very good. So the money from the banks goes to the SOEs and not to the private sector, which is a contradictory contradiction because in fact, the private sector is more efficient and they invest more and they have, they're more productive and so on. So that's the issue. The financial system does not channel the money towards the private sector, which is the most productive and the most efficient. Instead, the bank-based system uh, prefer to channel the money towards SOEs, which are not very efficient, okay? So what happens? The, fire, the private companies then, they don't get a lot of bank loans, so they have to find somehow some alternative forms of financing. And one of these alternative forms of financing could be trade credit. Okay, so what is trade credit? Basically, uh, if you get some products uh, from your suppliers, your suppliers maybe will uh, tell you, okay, you can pay later. You don't have to pay now. So basically your suppliers acts like a bank and it gives you the products, but you don't have to pay them. So it acts like a bank in inverted commas uh, because it gives you credit in a sense. So that is trade credit, which can be seen as informal finance in a certain way. So in China, many companies, especially the SMEs, because they cannot get loans from banks very easily, what they can do is they can resort to trade credit and get credit from their suppliers. Okay. Now trade credit is not important only in China, also in other countries, it is widely used by uh, companies. Uh, for example, in the US, uh, the aggregate value of trade credit for non-financial firms is actually three times that of the bank loans and 15 times that of commercial paper. So trade credit, which also in accounting is known as accounts payable, is <clears throat> very widely used in other countries as well. 
Okay. And then there is some literature which shows the presence of a trade credit channel in addition to a bank lending channel in the transmission of monetary policy. Um, so this literature has based, basically focused on uh, developed countries, but they have shown that in the presence of tight monetary policy, basically companies in several countries will make use of trade credit uh, if bank lending becomes more difficult to obtain. So trade credit is important throughout the world. Okay, um, so it has been studied a lot, but most of the studies on trade credit actually has focused on developing developed countries like the US or the UK, where the financial systems work very well. But still, uh, some companies, many companies still tend to use uh, trade credit quite a lot. So it's not something that is only used in countries with poorly developed financial systems. Trade credit is used uh, throughout the world. Okay. Now, um, there's a study by Rajan and Zingales from 1998, and what they show is that uh, when financial markets are very developed, then it is cheaper to get external finance for firms. So in a country with well-developed financial system, uh, any firm can get money from banks and they don't have to pay a very high interest rate. They can just get the money and that's it quite easily. So the development of financial markets makes it cheaper to obtain uh, external finance like bank loans. Okay. And then there's another study by Fisman and Love from 2003, and they find that in countries where financial markets are poorly developed, then companies tend to use trade credit as an alternative source of funds to bank loans. Why? Well, because again, if the financial system is poorly developed, it may be difficult for SMEs to get bank loans at all in the first place, uh, because like in China, uh, the, bank, uh, the, 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 the banks prefer to lend money to more established SOEs rather than to SMEs. So in this case, it may be impossible for companies uh, to get bank loans at all. Alternatively, they may get uh, bank loans if they want to, but because of the poorly developed financial market, SMEs may have to pay a lot for the bank loan. So they may prefer to use trade credit more as an alternative to bank loans, which may be either not available at all or pretty expensive. Okay. So in countries with poor developed, poorly developed financial markets, then because bank loans are other difficult to get or expensive, then companies may uh, kind of use a lot of trade credit. Okay. Um, and then again, uh, Peterson and Rajan uh, claim that firms will use trade credit as a source of finance, essentially because they cannot raise funds from traditional uh, bank finance channels because they cannot raise funds, either because bank loans are not available at all, or because bank loans are available but extremely expensive, and so they cannot afford the bank loans. So what is our research question in this paper? In, in the light of all these considerations just made, okay, we want to investigate the following question. Given that capital markets are quite imperfect in China, we want to look at the extent to which the level of regional financial development will influence the choice of financing for inventory investment between trade credit and bank credit. So we want to focus on inventory investment. Okay, why is that? I'm going to talk about in a moment. But let me just say what is inventory investment, what is meant by inventory investment. Well, suppose a firm produces, um, I don't know, shoes, then what it will do, it will produce a lot of shoes and then keep some in a kind of in a room in the back of the store. So when a guy comes and asks for a pair of shoes size eight or whatever, then they can go to that store, find the shoes and give the guy the shoes. So they will have uh, produced a lot of shoes and keep them as a stock in a room in the back of the store so that when clients come and ask for the shoes of that size, they can just go to that room in the back of the store, get the shoes and give them to the customer. They don't want the customer to come and ask for the shoes and then have to say, oh yeah, okay, fine. We have to produce these shoes, come back in three weeks time when we will have done that. That's not possible. So inventories are like things that you produce and that you then don't sell immediately, but keep store in the back of your company for a while. And then when the customers come and ask for the shoes, you just have the stuff there available and you can uh, just kind of give it to the customers. So that's inventory investment, okay? Uh, I'm going to talk more about it in a moment. 
But the focus of this paper is about inventory investment. Now, if you want to produce things uh, to put in the inventory, then you still need money to do that. And you can fund your inventory investment either using the bank loans or using the trade credit. Now, we focus on China here, and we want to show the extent to which regional financial development influences whether you fund your investment in inventories using either bank credit or trade credit. So in China, I'm going to show evidence about this in a moment. There are many provinces, uh, many cities, and these uh, provinces and cities are characterized by very different levels of financial development. Some cities are very highly financially developed. Some other cities are not very financially developed. So we want to look at differences between more and less financially developed uh, cities, and we want to see whether according to the level of financial development of the city you're based in, whether you're going to be more likely to use your bank credit or trade credit to finance your inventory investment. So that is the research question. So as I said in the previous um, slides, uh, some studies have looked at how countries with different level of financial development will use more of trade credit or bank credit according to the level of financial development of the country. Here, we don't do that. We focus on a single country, which is China. But because China is characterized by a significant heterogeneity across cities and regions about financial development, within one single country, we can look at whether regions with different levels of financial development are characterized by the usage of more trade credit or bank credit according to the financial development of the region uh, the, the, the companies live in. So that is basically the research question. Okay, now why do we want to talk about inventories here? Okay, there are several reasons. So inventories, um, kind of they play a very important role in the provisions of product and services. And this happens at all levels of the economy, okay? So many studies have looked at inventory investment and they have focused at product level or firm level or industry level or sector level. So there are many studies that focused on inventory investment at all these levels. Why? Well, because inventories play such an important, such an important role in the provisions of products and services. Okay. And then, most importantly, inventory investment plays a very important role in defining business cycle fluctuations. So even back in 1991, Blinder and Machini, they said that inventory investment accounts for a dramatic share of the decline in output during recessions. Okay. So during a recession, output goes down a lot. Why? Well, a big kind of component of the drop in output during recession comes because inventory investment declines a lot. Okay. And then Alan Blinder, who was a former governor of the Fed uh, in the US, he said that the business cycle is an inventory cycle to a surprisingly large degree. So again, business cycle is driven by inventories. So in recessions, we have recessions because inventory investment goes down a lot. And we have uh, kind of expansions because inventory investment goes up a lot in some other kind of phases of the business cycle. So business class cycle is an inventory cycle. So this shows that it is quite important to focus on inventory investment. <coughs> and then also inventory investment is really very sensitive to financial variables, okay? And also to monetary policy. Why? Well, because it is very liquid and it has very low adjustment costs. So inventory investment is opposed to fixed investment. Fixed investment is invex investment in fixed capital like machines, uh, buildings, or things like that. So whereas investing in a machine, buying new machines, selling machines, or buying land, selling land, is extremely expensive, okay, because fixed capital has high adjustment costs. If you want to kind of uh, reduce your inventory investment, you can do that very easily because inventory investment is very liquid. It has low adjustment costs. So if you want to reduce your inventory investment, you stop producing lots of shoes and you just let your stock of shoes that you produced before and that you stored in that room in the back of your, in your shop, you just let them go down. When the customers buy them, you don't replenish the stock and that's it. So you can reduce your inventories quite easily. So because inventory investment has low adjustment costs, 
okay? It is very sensitive to financial variables. So if your cash flow goes down, it's very easy to reduce your investment in inventories, whereas it's quite complicated to reduce your investment in fixed capital. So inventory investment is very liquid, okay? So there are many studies on how inventory investment has affected, uh, has been affected by financial variables. And again, uh, I actually did my PhD dissertation back in 92 on that, on inventory investment in the UK and how it is affected by financial variables like cash flow and other financial variables. So that was for the UK. And uh, I did, I chose to do that dissertation because I thought inventory investment was really an interesting topic. That was back in 1992. Okay, it is still an interesting topic now, but despite this, not much research has been done in China about inventory investment. So there is very few papers that have looked at inventory investment in China, but we have very good data. So we, why not look at inventory investment in China? That is why we want to use, uh, we want to look at these issues in this paper. And again, why do we want to focus on China? Again, it's extremely interesting because China faces that puzzle that I described earlier on in my presentation. So China has been characterized by a very phenomenal economic growth in the last 30 years. However, the financial system in China is malfunctioning. How did they uh, manage to do that miracle? Okay, that is a very interesting question. So China is really an interesting country to focus on. Okay, and then also there is some data from trading economics uh, that shows that in China, changes in inventories are often a leading indicator for the overall performance of the economy. Okay, so in China, it is particularly interesting to look at inventory investment for this reason. Okay, and then in China, regional financial development is unbalanced. As I said before, some cities, some regions are show a very uh, high financial development, whereas other regions or cities are poorly financial developed, financially developed. So China is really an interesting case study uh, in, uh, because of its heterogeneity uh, across regions in terms of financial development. So for these reasons, we would like to focus on China. Okay, as I said, in this paper, we want to look at how firms uh, finance their inventory investment, and we want specifically to look at whether they use uh, bank loans or trade credit. So what about trade credit in China? Okay, so there is a literature which has shown uh, that trade credit is indeed an important alternative source of funds in China, that many firms use trade credit instead of bank loans uh, within the Chinese territory. So some examples, there is a paper by uh, these authors um, in 2007, and they, they show that the, there is a high usage of trade credit, okay, among firms that are not state-owned in China. And why do these firms use trade credit? Well, again, because they do not have easy access to bank credit. So these are private firms, they cannot access bank credit, instead they use trade credit, okay. Then there is some other evidence by Degrees and co-authors from 2016, and they show that the use of trade credit okay, can promote high sales growth for small firms. So they show that small firms that use a lot of trade credit, these firms show a very high sales growth. Okay. And then there is some more recent evidence by Franklin Allen and co-authors from 2019. And these authors, they define trade credit as a constructive informal financing channel. And they say that firms that use trade credit exhibit then a good firm performance. They do better, they invest more, they have higher sales growth, and they perform better in general. So those firms that use this trade credit, okay, exhibit better performance in general. So these authors uh, define trade credit as a constructive informal financing, okay? So there are a few studies that have looked at trade credit in China, okay? So what is our what are our contributions in this paper? Several contributions. Okay, um, so we build on some literature by Carpenter and co-authors and by myself and uh, another co-author of mine. Uh, and this literature looks at the role of financial variables in determining inventory investment in the US and the UK. So they show how uh, variables, financial variables like cash flow or leverage or other financial variables, how they affect inventory investment in the US and the UK. So we built on this literature and for the first time, 
we look at how some financial variables can explain Chinese firms' inventory investment. And which financial variables do we look at? Well, we, as I said, we focus on bank loans and trade credit. So that is our objective in this paper. So we build on a literature which has looked at similar issues uh, in the US and the UK, but for the first time, we focus on the Chinese economy. Okay, then we also build on another paper by Fisband and Love, uh, and I mentioned that paper before. What they say is that firms that are uh, based in countries with less developed financial markets, they will rely more on trade credit, whereas firms that live in countries with more developed financial markets, they will use more bank loans. So they looked at a worldwide data set, and that showed, they showed that the level of financial development characterizing different countries determines whether countries, uh, whether firms based in one country or another, uses more bank loans or more trade credit. So again, they found that if you are based in a country with better developed financial system, you will use more of bank loans. Whereas if you are based in a country with a poorly developed financial system, bank loans will be either unavailable or too expensive. So you will, lose, you will use more trade credit. So we extend this country level analysis and we investigate for the first time the extent to which within one single country, city level financial development will affect the choice of financing. Okay, again, we can do this because China is a huge country and uh, it is characterized by different regions with different levels of financial development. So that is our second contribution. Okay, then we have a third contribution. So we provide kind of the first macro uh, evidence uh, on the debate of finance growth nexus in China, focusing on inventory investment which makes up a large part of GDP growth. So again, uh, there is a huge literature which has looked at how uh, finance affects economic growth in China. So how the, the provinces characterized by better financial development show higher growth compared to uh, provinces with less developed financial system. We build on this literature by providing the first microeconomic evidence that links financial development Okay, not directly to economic growth, but to inventory investment. And again, inventory investment is, makes up a huge part of GDP growth. So if we find some evidence about the finance, uh, the link between finance and inventory investment, we say something about the link between finance and GDP growth, simply because inventory investment makes a large part of GDP growth. It's a big component of GDP growth. As I said in previous slides, in fact, uh, I, some authors say that the business cycle is an inventory cycle. So economic growth is made up uh, to a big deal uh, by uh, inventory investment. So by looking at how finance affects inventory investment, we can say something about the finance growth nexus within China. Okay. And then the last contribution, we provide a comprehensive analysis about how the mix between these two forms of financing, namely trade credit and bank credit, differs across different types of firms. So we differentiate firms according to several uh, characteristics. And one is ownership, another is location, and another is financial conditions. So we look at different types of firms. I'm going to say more about that uh, later on. But our uh, analysis uh, looks at how um, different types of firms located in different types of provinces, more and less developed uh, provinces, will make use of a different mix between trade credit and bank credit. So what determines whether firms use more of trade credit or bank credit is not only whether the firms uh, live in provinces which are more or less financially developed, but we show that other firm characteristics also play an important role. And what are other firm characteristics? Well, they're like ownership, location, and financial conditions. So these are our main contributions uh, in this paper. So now I'm going to uh, illustrate the hypothesis that we test in this paper. So some background to the first hypothesis now. Uh, so as I said before, and I will repeat several times again, firms use trade credit uh, to finance themselves, essentially because they may find it difficult to obtain bank loans. 
okay? So they cannot get bank loans or bank loans are too expensive, so they will use trade credit, okay? And then if a firm is based in a country with more developed financial uh, systems, then it can get formal finance like bank loans uh, in a cheaper way. So if you live in a very uh, in a country with very developed financial system, any firm can get the bank loans at reasonable costs. Okay, and uh, so in line with the country level evidence provided by uh, Fisman and Love, okay, we will focus on China, which contains, as I said, very heterogeneous uh, regions in terms of financial development, and so we hypothesized the following issue. So what we say is the following. Our first hypothesis says that financial development basically will have a moderating effect on the association between bank loans and trade credit and inventory investment. So what does that mean? Financial development will strengthen the association between bank loans and inventory investment. Okay, so if you live in a region or a province with highly developed financial system, then bank loans and inventory investment will be strongly related. So you will use a lot of bank loans. The more bank loans you have, the more you will invest in inventories. Okay. However, if you live in a region with a poorly developed financial system, then what will happen is that you will use more of uh, trade credit to finance your inventory investment. So you can say that uh, basically, financial development strengthens the association between bank loans and inventory investment and weakens the association between trade credit and inventory investment. So again, if you live in a highly developed financial, a highly financially developed region, then you will lose bank, you will use bank loans to finance inventory investment. And so you will not use as much of trade credit. Okay. So in theory, we need to say one more thing. Uh, if you live in a in a financially developed uh, region, then bank credit will be fairly cheap. In that situation, trade credit will be fairly expensive. So for example, in the UK or the US, which are pretty much financially developed, firms still use quite a lot of trade credit, but trade credit is quite expensive compared to obtaining bank loans. So if you live in a, in a kind of uh, financially developed country, you, in theory, you should prefer to use bank loans because trade credit is always more expensive. However, even in the US and the UK, small firms, firms that are quite young, SMEs and so on, okay, the banks may not want to lend them money. And so these firms, even though US and UK are very financially developed, these firms may prefer to use trade credit because the banks may say, okay, these firms are unreliable. I don't want to lend them money. Uh, or if I do lend them money, I will charge them a very high interest rate. In that situation, then trade credit may be kind of the best option in the US and the UK for small uh, young firms, which may find it expensive to get bank loans. But in general terms, bank loans are cheaper. So if you live in a financially developed uh, region, then you, if you have the choice between the two, you would prefer bank loans, okay? Uh, because trade credit is more expensive, okay? However, if you kind of are based in a region which is poorly financially developed, then bank loans are difficult to get for everybody, and then you would use more of trade credit. Okay, so that, uh, that is our first hypothesis. So again, to summarize, uh, financial development will strengthen the association between bank loans and inventory investment. Firms will prefer to use bank loans, okay? And it will weaken the association between trade credit and inventory investment, because as I said, if you live in a financially developed region, then trade credit is very expensive. You don't want to use it to finance your inventories. So that is our first hypothesis. Now, what about our second hypothesis? So a little bit of background. Firms can basically choose, in theory, uh, either bank loans or trade credit to finance their uh, inventories or any of their activities. However, as I said, if a firm is financially constrained, even if they kind of live in a country with a well-developed financial system, they may not be able to obtain credit from the bank due to a cost premium. So because they are small firms, for example, they are young firms, the bank may say, okay, I don't lend to these firms, or if I do, I will charge them a lot of money because they are not reliable, okay? And especially in regions with poorly developed financial uh, systems, then 
firms that are more likely to be financially constrained, like small firms, young firms, and so on, will have to rely on trade credit uh, because it's going to be very difficult for them or very expensive to obtain bank loans. Okay. So then something else, there is a paper by Beck and co-authors, and they find that financial development is very important to lower informal barriers and transaction costs that hinder small firms' growth. So again, small firms are typically financially constrained. They find it quite expensive to get bank loans wherever they are based. However, if they're based in a financially developed country, then they will face lower transaction costs. And even if they're small firms, they will be able to get loans uh, at cheaper rates from banks. Okay, so if they are based in a financially developed region, then they will face lower informal barriers and lower transaction costs uh, when they want bank loans. So small firms will find it easier to get bank loans if they are based in a financially developed region. So if they can get loans in a cheaper way, then they can invest more and they can grow uh, more. So basically, financially de financial development will lower the barriers that small firms face and that normally hinder their growth. If these small firms are based in a financially developed uh, country or region, then they will be able to get the loans uh, at a lower rate, which means they will be able to invest more and grow faster. Okay. So basically the difficulties that are faced by the small firms in obtaining bank loans will be lower the higher the financial development. So if small firms live in a region with high financial development, it will be easier for them to get bank loans. So in light of this preliminary evidence, our second hypothesis will uh, be the following. Uh, it says that the moderating effect of financial development on the link between bank loans and trade credit and inventory investment will be stronger if the constraint. So again, small firms, for example, are highly financially constrained. So if they're based in a region with a highly developed financial system, then they will use more bank loans, for example. So the association between bank loans and inventory investment will be kind of stronger for small firms, okay? Because for these firms, then being based in a financially developed country or region will make bank loans easier to get. And so these firms will get more bank loans and use bank loans to finance inventory investment. Okay. However, if they're based in a poorly developed financial system, then bank loans may be difficult to get. So they will use more trade credit to finance inventory investment if they're based in a region with poorly developed financial system. So in that case, if a small firm is based in a poorly developed financial system uh, region, then it will be even harder for these firms to get bank loans. In this way, they will have to use trade credit to finance inventory investment. So for small firms based in the regions with low financial development, the association between trade credit and inventory investment will be even stronger. So that is our second hypothesis. So it looks at how, on the one hand, bank loans and trade credit, on the other hand, inventory investment, how these two things are associated and how this association is different for firms that are more and less likely to be financially constrained. So our paper basically tests these two hypotheses. So how do we test this hypothesis? Let me talk about our specifications now. So basically what we do is we use a very old model, which is called the stock adjustment model. And it was proposed by Lovell in 1961. So this model I had used also in my PhD dissertations back uh, in the 92. Um, so what does this equation uh, say basically? On the left, we have Delta I. I, big I, is inventories. So Delta I is inventory investment. Inventory investment is a function of lagged inventory investment. Okay. And then it's also a function of lagged sales, okay, contemporaneous and lagged sales. So the, we have this um, equation, which is estimated uh, for different firms. Little j indexes the firm, little t indexes the time, and then we have k, which in this indexes industries, p, which is provinces, and little o, which is for ownership. 
So inventory investment is estimated within a dynamic model framework. So it's a, fun it's a function of itself lagged. Okay, it's a function of the change in sales. So uh, current and lagged change in sales. And then the, the next term is uh, so-called a negative correction term. So it has two components, I, which is inventories, and sales, which is uh, S. And so we look at the difference between inventory and sales. What we do, we assume that inventories uh, are accumulated and there is a target level of inventories, which is given by the sales. So if inventories are far from the sales, yeah, what happens? Uh, if they're higher than the sales, it means we have too many inventories according to the target. So we want to decumulate inventories. On the other hand, if sales are bigger than inventories, inventories are lower than the target, so we need to accumulate more inventories. Okay. So this I minus S is a error correction term. And it says again, inventories follow a target level, which is given by the sales. So if inventories are bigger than sales, we have too many, we need to decumulate inventories. On the other hand, if inventories are higher than the target, if I is bigger than S, we have too many inventories, we want to decumulate inventory investment. So beta three has to be negative. So that is the error correction model, basically. And then what do we do? We add our two financial variables, which are our key variables. What are they? Bank loans and TC, which is trade credit. Okay, so our inventory investment follows a model which was a very old model, which has been proved to be kind of reliable from the literature since 1961. And then we augment this model with the financial variables. Okay, what do we have next? We have a big error term, which is uh, includes several things. So VJ is a firm specific component of the error term. It takes into account all the firm specific characteristics that don't vary with time and that may affect inventory investment. So for example, if the manager is risk averse, he may want to invest more or less in inventories. So that's a characteristic which doesn't change with time. So that's VJ. How do we take it into account? Well, we are going to use this, we are going to estimate this model uh, because it's going to be a panel data that we have. I'm going to talk about the data more later. We are going to estimate this model using a fixed effect, okay, which takes into account the VJ component of the error term. VT takes into account time specific components. So we take that into account by including time dummies into our model. VK takes into account industry specific effects, which take, we take that into account by including industry uh, dummies. VP takes into account provincial effects, so we include provincial dummies. VO takes into account ownership effect, we take that into account by including ownership dummies. And E is an idiosyncratic component of the error term. Okay, then what do we do? We uh, include, we want to test our hypothesis one. So what do we do? We include interactions of our financial variables with city level financial development. Okay, so we got the red terms in this equation, which are added, and we include bank loans times financial development and trade credit times financial development. Okay, so we expect financial development to basically um, uh, kind of enhance the association between loans and trade credit. So um, if bank loans go up, then firms will invest more in inventories. This will happen the more, the more financially developed the city the firm is based in is. So we expect to have a positive coefficient on the interaction between loans and financial development. And we also expect to have a negative interaction between trade credit and financial development. So if a firm, uh, the, the association between trade credit and financial development, okay, will be weakened, the more financially developed the city, the firm is based in is. So again, if you're based in a very financially developed city, it's easier for you to get bank loans and cheaper for you to get bank loans. So you will use less of trade credit. So the association between trade credit and uh, bank loans will be weakened the higher the financial development, because the higher the financial development, the cheaper is bank, bank loans. So it's better to use bank loans rather than trade credit because bank loans is cheaper. So to 
test our hypothesis H1, we look at the B7, beta 7 and beta 8 coefficients, and we expect the beta 7 to be positive and the beta 8 uh, to be negative. So that is how we test our hypothesis one. And then, again, the rationale for this is that financial development reduces cost of external finance. And so high, high financial development will mean you use more bank credit. Uh, however, if you live in a city with low financial development, then bank credit will be too expensive. And so trade credit will be the best deal because it will be cheaper. And so low financial development will encourage you to use trade credit. Okay. Uh, what about hypothesis two? In order to test whether these associations between bank loans on the one hand and inventory investment and trade credit and inventory investment are stronger for firms that are more likely to be financially constrained, then we're going to estimate our model on different groups of firms uh, based on ownership and the region they're based in and the level of financial constraint they are uh, facing. So for example, we expect these associations that I just talked about to be stronger for small firms, which are more likely to be financially constrained. So if we estimate the model separately for small and large firms, we expect those beta seven and beta eight coefficients I just discussed to be higher in absolute value for the small firms, which are more likely to be financially constrained. Uh, so that is how we test hypothesis two, and I'm going to show that in a second. Okay, now about our data. So we use a very rich data set taken from the National Bureau of Statistics in China. Uh, the years are from 2004 to 2009, okay? So you may say that the data is a little bit old because now we're in 2020, but unfortunately this data is very rich, it's very good. But after 2009, some of the key variables uh, that they uh, include, they are not compatible with previous years. So basically it's very difficult to use data from 2010 onwards because key variables are measured in a different way. And also the firms that are included in the data set, they are defined using different criteria. So the data after 2009 is not comparable with the data uh, before 2009. So we cannot really use it. Okay, the data, the firms are in the manufacturing uh, mining sectors and they are included in the data set if they have annual sales above 5 million RMB. So the firms are mainly unlisted, okay, and we have about 220,000 firms, uh, which uh, corresponds to about 600,000 observations. So it's a fairly large panel data set. And then we differentiate our firms according to the city where they are located. So we have 286 prefecture level cities uh, or municipalities, but 286 cities basically. So this gives us kind of a fair amount of heterogeneity because we define, we, uh, define the financial development of these cities. Some will be more and some will be less financially developed. And then we kind of um, classify firms into state-owned, collective, private, and foreign based on the share of capital paid in by different agents. And here, private firms, as I said, they are typically smaller firms, younger firms, they're typically more financially constrained, whereas state-owned firms are typically very large and um, kind of protected by the banks, and so they're not likely to face financial constraints. Then we merge our city-level uh, financial development data set uh, with this MBS data set, Okay, and the city level uh, financial development data set data are taken from the China City Statistical Yearbook. So we get basically the financial development of the cities and we merge this data set to the National Bureau of Statistics data set. So we have all the firms, all the 200,000 firms in the main data set. We know where they're based, in which city they're based, and we know the level of financial development of the city where they're based. We deflate all the variables using the GDP deflator. This is um, RX. Do you, no. you have a, another 12 minutes, including QA session. So just like a please. Okay, so I will try Again. to Thank hurry you. up. Yeah, thank you. Um, some descriptive statistics. Okay, inventory investment is mainly driven by private firms. Okay, they have the highest level of inventory investment. Trade credit is fairly high in foreign firms. 
And uh, bank loans, of course, is very high in state-owned firms because state-owned firms are basically uh, those firms that um, get loans whenever they want from the banks. Okay. Um, now, what about financial development in China? You can see this map. This is about 2009. And the different shades of red indicates different levels of financial development, which is measured as total loans over the city's gross regional product. And so you find that uh, there are many shades of red. Some provinces, especially in the coastal area, they show a lot of red, very deep red, very financial developed. Other provinces are pink or light pink, very low level of financial development. So this shows that all these provinces, all these regions in China are characterized by different levels of financial development. Okay, so what about our results? Just let's look at the uh, last column in this table. Okay, we want to focus on the financial variables, loans, trade credit, okay, last column, column four, they're all positive and statistically significant. This shows that the more loans you get from bank or the more trade credit you get, the more you are likely to invest in inventories. What about the interaction between loans and financial development? They're positive. So this tells you that if you're based in a more developed financial, uh, in a more financially developed city, you will use loans even more. So the association between loans and financial development, uh, the association between loans and inventory investment will be strengthened by financial development. However, if you live in a more de financially developed city, then you will use less trade credit because you can use cheaper bank loans, so you will not use so much of trade credit. So the association between trade credit and inventory investment is weakened Okay, if you live in more financially developed cities. So the coefficient associated with the interaction between trade credit and financial development is negative, which is consistent with our first hypothesis. Okay, um, so that what this says is that bank lending is more used for firms based in financially developed cities, okay, because they can get bank loans more cheaply. Okay, but on the other hand, firms in less financially developed cities will use more trade credit, and this is in line with H1. Okay, then I'm going to just go quickly on the robustness test. We do several robustness tests. First, we use different indicators of financial development. Okay, I'm not going to say what they are, but we use four more indicators of financial development, and our main results still hold. And then we kind of all these models are estimated using uh, the fixed effect model, but there could be endogeneity issues. So we use some fixed effect IV, and we also use some system GMM estimator, and our instrument, our results are still robust to controlling for endogeneities in two ways. Then we also estimate our model based on a balanced sample because there is a massive entry of new firms. So we just check whether the results hold if we use balanced panel and the, and the results still hold. Then we include the liquidity in our model as an additional financial variables and the results still hold. And then we say, okay, let's stop the sample in 2006 because the results may be driven by the global financial crisis. So let's stop the sample in 2006 and see whether the results still hold. And indeed, they still hold. Okay. And then we account for financial constraints, ownership, regions, uh, size, and political uh, affiliation. Okay. So this is the results for different types of firms. Let's only look at columns one and column three. As I said, state-owned firms are less likely to face financial constraints. They are kind of, they can obtain loans from banks whenever they want because banks like to lend money to state-owned firms. So you can see that the interactions between loans and trade and financial development, trade credit and financial development are not significant for state-owned firms. So these firms, regardless of which region they are based in, they can get loans and trade credit whenever they want. So no effect of financial development. However, look at private firms. The interaction between loans and financial development is positive. The interaction between trade credit and financial development is negative. So this shows that private firms that are more likely to be financially constrained, they show very strong association between financial variables and financial development. 
state-owned firms which are not financially constrained, they show no association at all because the coefficients are insignificant. So this is in line with our hypothesis too, which says that these associations have to be magnified for firms more likely to be financially constrained. Okay, and so that is the summary. Um, and then let me talk, I don't have time to talk about regions, but let's look at, okay, other ways to distinguish firms according to financial constraints. So typically, small firms are more likely to be financially constrained. Large firms are less likely to be financially constrained. Column one presents the results for large firms, column two for small firms. What can we see? The interaction, the coefficient on the interaction is bigger in absolute value for small firms. So again, this confirms our hypothesis too, which says that this kind of um, moderating effect of uh, financial development uh, is magnified for firms more likely to be financially constrained. Okay, so for small firms, the two interaction terms are larger in absolute uh, value, which again is consistent with our hypothesis too. Columns three and four, we differentiate firms according to whether they have or they don't have political affiliation. If you have political affiliation, then you are somehow affiliated with, say, uh, provincial government or central government. It's easier for you to get loan from banks because your affiliation with the central government makes you kind of more liked by the banks. So if you have political affiliation, you are less likely to face financial constraint. Look at column three the coefficients associated with the interaction between loans and development or trade credit and development, not significant. But if you don't have political affiliation, you're more likely to face lots of financial constraints. In that case, the effects, uh, the coefficients on the interactions between loan and financial development and between trade credit and financial development are all very strongly significant and quite large in magnitude. Okay, so what this tells us, okay, is that Basically, uh, the coefficients associated with the interaction terms are all significant for financially constrained firms, regardless of how financial constraints are measured. And the magnitude of the coefficients on these interaction terms are higher for financially constrained firms, which supports our hypothesis too. So let me just provide some conclusions here. Um, so given that capital market imperfections are very important in China, what we want to look is at how firms finance their inventory investment using different sources of financing, namely bank credit and trade credit. And we find that both bank lending and trade credit play a significant role in financing inventories. Okay. And then we observe that cities with high financial development, firms rely more on bank loans, whereas in cities with low financial development, firms will rely more on trade credit to finance their inventories. And then we show that the moderating effect played by financial development on the association between bank loans and trade credit and inventory investment is more pronounced for private firms, small firms, firms that are politically unaffiliated and firms based in coastal regions, which all face higher financial constraints. Okay, results are uh, robust to using several controlled variables, alternative variables, different estimation techniques. So our results are quite solid. So what about policy implications? Okay, so we provide a portrait of the choice of financing used by different types of Chinese firms. And we also provide fresh micro evidence on the relationship between financial development and economic growth. And so basically the importance of trade credit for private firms, for firms based in the coastal regions, for firms that are more likely to be financially constrained, what does it tell us? It suggests that underdeveloped and inefficient financial markets might be an obstacle for these firms to get money and to invest and grow. Okay. And so basically, uh, given that firms that are private, that are located in coastal regions and that are small or small and medium sized enterprises, given that these firms are the engine of growth in the Chinese economy, Policymakers should really think about creating a more supportive legal and regulatory system to promote more formal sources of funds to these companies. So coastal firms, uh, private firms, SMEs in general, they tend to invest a lot and grow a lot. But if they don't get enough money from banks, they still grow a lot and invest a lot, but they could have 
a much higher potential. If they had more money from banks, they could grow and in, they could invest and grow even more. So indeed, the policy implication is that the policymakers should make sure that these firms get more money from banks. In this way, they could keep investing and keep growing or invest and grow at even faster rates. And so a more effective financial system would lead to a better allocation of resources towards these firms that constitute the engine of growth in China. So a more effective financial system would ensure that these private firms, SMEs, or firms located in coastal regions got more money. In this way, they could invest a lot, grow a lot, and it would be beneficial to the economy. And actually, there has been some positive steps in these directions because uh, there are several reforms which have been made to the financial system in China, and the result has been a significant increase in the flow of loans to the private sector. Okay, so positive steps have been made, but the kind of main policy implication is that the Chinese policymakers should make more reforms to ensure that these firms, SMEs and so on, get more money which is the only way in which these firms can continue to invest and grow and keep the Chinese economy growing at high rates in the future. This is the main policy implications, and this is kind of the end of the presentation. So thanks for the attention, and any questions are welcome. Thank you very much, Professor Alessandra. And um, it's very interesting and an imp informative question. I'm sure uh, Oh, most of you have question that would like to discuss the, uh, this presentation, but actually it's it's really like a, no time, less time, few, few minutes, like to have a discussion. So we will, maybe we can take just one quick question. Do you have any question from the audience? Maybe you can just raise your hand or just like put in your chat box or Alex, do you mind if you take like question via email after this, um, this oh, session? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the students can find my email on the website and uh, yeah, any comments, any questions. I mean, the, the paper is now under review with a four star journal, uh, so it may be rejected and very soon. So any comments that could help to improve it uh, would be like definitely most welcome. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, hopefully it will, yeah, it will end up in a good journal. Um, so yeah, please feel free.